All right, so welcome to another episode of Happy Fun Music Time. I am here with uh, Alex Salas uh, and <laughs> Frontside. Um, we keep forgetting to do this every interview, but if you guys could just go through, say your names, what you play, just so uh, the listener can recognize everybody. <laughs> you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> hey, I'm Alex Jolly. I play drums in Frontside. I am Walter. I play guitar and do vocals. Hey, I'm Josh, and I play the bass. All right, perfect. Boo. <laughs> well, we're glad Nailed to have it. you boys on. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'd speak for both of us here. We're both pretty big fans of your stuff. Uh, we heard the LP when it came out a couple years ago, and uh, the EP's great too. And um, we're yeah, we're just stoked to have you guys on. Thanks. Yeah, it's yes, really, it's really good to be on. Well, thank you. Okay, so, and I just jump in here because I have, so I, I made a notepad document with the way that I'm thinking of going through some of these questions and uh, uh, cross, if you want, you can jump in whenever. Um, I went back and I've, I've kind of uh, chronologically ordered my questions based on the history of your band. Um, and so I want to begin here and I want to go back to the earliest video I could find of you guys. I found, I found on YouTube this is a, this is a show that you guys played at some place which I am not familiar with, being a Canadian. It's called the Eclectic Intellectual in, in Zebulon, North Carolina, and this show took place on November twenty seventh, twenty eleven, and it, uh, you guys are playing uh, essentially, eventually, the title track off your uh, what would become your first record, if I'm not mistaken. Um, do you guys remember this show? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, wh wh what do you remember about this show? Uh, I mean, I remember it being freezing cold. Um, uh, I mean, I... Shoot, I mean, I remember it being really fucking awkward. Uh, cause yeah. Like, cause it's just this... It was just a really... Uh, yeah, just a small little coffee house. So yeah, I mean this this place we would go to, and it's like near a big city that would be optimal for us to play. But we kept going to this like off town, um, just like rinky dink kind of place. And uh, but you know we'd end up getting convincing some people to go there. And this place was so weird because they'll let you. Um, it's not. It's like a supermarket. And you buy like six packs of beer and then just drink them at the show. I'm <laughs> sure there's got to be some kind of uh, liquor law violation going on there, but they let it all fly because it was just one of those places. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we weren't we weren't of age for drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How how old would you guys have been at that point in 2011? I would have been 18 or 19. Yeah. 19. Yeah. yeah at that that point in time. Wow, wow. And so you guys have been playing some of these songs for like going on 10 years then, eh? I mean, you're, you're playing essentially eventually. Uh, uh, I mean, how do you think that like, not only the band, but I mean, how have those songs changed over the years and the way you play them? Or, or do they strike you differently now being older? We slow down. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, especially if you're if we're referencing that video. Um, I mean, we play I mean, we were because I, I, I mean, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen that video recently because I find it hilarious. But yeah, we were flying through that shit. And we also <laughs> had it, and we also played it uh, like we were full step down. Oh, so because like I, the vocals I had were like way different whenever I first wrote it. But, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird to think about how long we've been playing it and how many times we've played it and how it kind of just gained more popularity. Uh, I mean, more than it ever has had in recent years. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bizarre. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to act like it isn't. I have only been playing these songs for seven months. Oh, no way. Oh, you're I a new know. member. This is, this is our, this is our new drummer we have with us. Yeah. Um, so he's, so actually these are fresh songs to him. We yeah. tricked him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that that will uh, inform some of my uh, upcoming questions. And interesting, didn't even know you guys had a new drummer. So, how did that come about? Um, did you did you audition a bunch of drummers? How, how did this happen? No, uh, we just so Alex Jolly 
is probably one of the sickest drummers in North Carolina. <laughs> and it was a pretty easy, like, we, we just knew him. And we were like, you're the guy that can come in here and play these songs. Unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, we had to find a, a different drummer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he. First he, draft pick. Yeah, first draft pick. <laughs> and he was able to do it. And, yeah, he, I mean, he. So, I mean, that's that's another way that all the old songs are changing. We're, we're mm. kind of adjusting them with, you know, a new drummer. And, yeah, obviously just. Everything else changes in our lives too, I guess. I was very grateful they asked me to do it because I was already kind of a fan of the band anyway. Me and my girlfriend both were pretty big fans of them at the time, and had just uh, I had just played a show with them actually on the same bill, but with another band that I play with, and uh, we actually got to meet in person at that show. They watched my set, I watched their set, and then after that, we were like kind of friends. And I actually met Josh like way like the summer before that at a mutual friend's wedding, which is pretty funny. So. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And so, and so when you come in, uh, Alex, as, as the new drummer, um, do you, uh, are you encouraged to kind of put your own spin on these or are you told, please follow the old drummer? Our songs are, are, are perfect the way they are. Uh, uh, like what's, what's kind of your, um, your approach to this material? So the way that I look at it, and I'm sure a lot of other people uh, probably think the same way, but, you know, obviously I respect, uh, you know, the, the former drummer, uh, Jake, his playing was great. And I want to I want to respect what he put down on the stuff that's already released. Um, so I like to try to play that as close to what he was doing as possible. Obviously, adding my own little, you know, fills and stuff here and there. Um, but with the newer stuff coming up, you know, um, I kind of get like the base for what I should be doing. And then I kind of get a little bit more freedom with that. But as far as the stuff that's already out, yeah, I try to keep that as, as true to the part that you're hearing as I can. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I'll ask a question here to Josh as well. And then across you can jump in if you want. Um, uh, Josh, as the bass player, um, when you change drummers in a band and you've been playing these songs for so long, um, does that impact your playing? Do you find yourself now changing your parts to better fit the song? Because, you know, bass and drums go together. It's the rhythm section. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say we've, like, had to do a great deal of that yet. I mean, playing with a different drummer, for sure, you you got to learn to vibe with them as a bass player because we're our, our um, inner workings are very intimate in a song, but um i think playing with alex has helped me a lot as a bass player learn to approach a song a little bit differently or see it a bit differently so yeah it's mm -hmm. uh, it's helped for sure more perspectives always help nice 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 uh crossy do you want to jump in with a question or do you want me to just keep rolling here i got so many questions <laughs> fair enough fair enough um I, okay i i guess I, I have a couple questions um so I, I found you guys um, when you had just, I think it's when you just put out the Ground Pound the Pillars video that popped up on some forum or something. Um, like, what was the first song? Because you guys have been playing, like, especially the stuff from the LP for, like, almost 10 years. Um, what was the first song that you wrote off of that? Like, which one came first? Off of, so... Um... I mean, it, it it would be, it would be essentially. I mean, I'm oh, pretty sure that's tracks, the I, first one. Yeah, yep. yeah, actually, um, yeah. I mean, well, this was, you know, we've been playing these songs forever. Essentially, was was essentially ground pound, mirrors, melatonin, walking in tempo. Those were all released in 2013. So we recorded those and released them in 2013 and then the other half of that album came out in 2017 uh, but yeah so that first ep that we released essentially was the first oh, fair and enough. that like that was that's in a that's in a weird tuning that i have and it was like i just ended up i ended up making that tuning and that was like the first song that ended up popping out of it and i was like yeah, maybe I should stick with this. And I wrote a, I wrote a couple other ones, but yeah, that's the first. Nice. What hmm. um, what was the tuning? Uh, we're we're both guitar nerds here. I'm curious. Well, you take so you just do. 
it's it's like standard, but you do half step down. So you just go ahead and tune your guitar to that. Then your what would be your D string, you tune that up two whole steps, and then you take your G string and tune that up a whole step. Oh. So it's yeah, I mean so it huh. ends up being it ends up being super weird. Like it's uh, like D sharp, G sharp, F, G sharp, B you sharp. You do some chord D shapes sharp. with higher yeah. notes sort of sprinkled in them, I, I think. I've never tried that. that. You could do like a bunch of chord shapes with higher notes kind of sprinkled in them, right? You can't. Well, you can keep your you can keep your fingers closer together and still get a whole lot of dissonance, and that's and that's what it yeah. ended up doing. And that's yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of it's it's almost a one trick pony. Um, I mean, you can't really just play in every key like you can in standard. But yeah, I mean, it 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 definitely bred some uh, interesting songs and riffs, and you know. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. And and so, speaking of this title track, right? Um, so you're saying so you put out the record in 2017, essentially, eventually. Um, we, I, I, I'm not sure if you listened to it. We covered your record on this podcast, essentially, eventually. Uh, it was a little while ago, and we kind of did a deep dive into each song, and we kind of we we attempted to do some kind of lyrical interpretations, and so we tossed around some theories uh, on, on that uh, podcast. So I just want to ask whoever, I'm not sure if it's Walter or uh, like, me, actually, yeah. you know, yeah, be you. Okay. So first question, is the album essentially eventually like, is it about some kind of cyclical relationship and on and off relationship? Hence the title, you know, essentially, eventually uh, title of the song. What was that? The origin of that record? The title of the song has nothing to do with that. I mean, I've been, I've been out of, in and out of plenty of weird um, relationships with uh, a few different people. Uh, <laughs> it's, not it's not necessarily what all of those songs on there are about is, at all. As And it was essentially eventually came from a really stupid joke that me and Josh had together. Like, I can't even, not it's even so stupid. I can't even, I'm not even, I can't even explain it. But yes, it, it does sound somewhat poetic in a way. And, um, I mean, I think it, I think we were able to derive more meaning from it now than we were back then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, it's and it's definitely not a concept album. I mean, e everything came at all all came at different times, and I mean, I'm I definitely I'm not a good enough lyricist where I can actually, you know, carry through any concept or or stay on track for the most part. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely there's definitely plenty of heartbreak and and all that. Yeah. It's definitely there's definitely shit about my relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so two two questions about this song specifically, and then again, Cross, you can jump in if you want. Um, I, I I I love this song. So the, um, my first question to you, and I guess this is to any of the band really. Um, uh, does so this title track essentially eventually. Uh, so the whole record isn't about this kind of. It isn't a concept record in any sense, dealing with a relationship or anything like that, but. This song seems to be, and so I was wondering if you faded in the track and faded out the track to emphasize that cyclicality of the relationship that you are describing in the song. Am I reading too far into this, or was that something you guys thought of? You are reading too far into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really wish we were that clever. I mean, I really wish we were. Um, we might start it, saying that. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean it, it, it definitely just happened like that. And um, yeah, you know, they say if a song fades out, it, you know, implies that it never ended. So that song's yeah. still going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is super, this is super unrelated, but you ever, like, you've seen that, uh, that meme with the Scooby-Doo actors where they're interviewing them, like, from the live action. And the girl is like, oh, <laughs> no, you know, what are you talking about? The commercial about? is uh, good. It's, you know, it appeals to girls and boys. And it's really good. And then it just switches to the guys. Like, it has a fucking talking dog. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen that one. No, it's like the English <laughs> professor versus the author. So, like, their viewpoints kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> i was just curious like you know it seems to me that like you know i i'm gonna go with that interpretation for now if you guys don't have a um an objection to it my my other question about this song is not as um symbolic 
I wanted to ask about a, a, a bit that you guys do on the demo of Essentially Eventually, and you also do this live in some of the recordings I've seen. Oh, yeah. There's this crazy guitar lick drum roll bit during that final chord progression, which which fades out on the recording that you did not include in the uh, recording that for the crazy. album. Yeah, why why is that not on there? That part is really cool. <laughs> Uh, well, like I said, I, I just wanted to imply that the song never ended. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I mean, I there there are definitely additions that we've had. I just, I mean, it's a, it's a sick part, but it's kind of, um, uh, I mean, you know, you try you try to steer clear of too having too much wanky stuff in there, where you're just like. You know, we're already all over the place enough. And I thought the, yeah, I thought I just, I think just at the time, I really thought fading out was a cool thing to do with it. I think, mm -hmm. it's, I think it might be as simple as that, but it's still, you know, fading out live is pretty underwhelming to try to do. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, so we, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, that's the way we would end it live, but I thought it served the song well to just keep that part going. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's something to be said for, saving some things for a live setting yeah yeah totally and i mean and I, I love that chord progression it's so evocative um uh and i actually want to ask one question about the next song which has uh, i i've we kind of discussed on on our podcast but but i just want to hear from you guys why is it called ground pound the pillars like that's a reference it's right mario. to a, a, the mario reference to mario okay okay and 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 i i don't get it because <laughs> i've never really played mario <laughs> <laughs> uh man i mean these are you know it's, <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's like i think it's in it's on the the level with a pyramid you know, like the it has the sand pyramid like and Mario this, like, in Egypt right? or something like that um i think it's one of those levels i i kind of forget it's just kind of hmm. just kind of one of those names that we say it and we just forget it <laughs> 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 um, I, mean, really, I mean, really, though, I, I, I hardly, you know, it, it. We were playing a, a lot of Mario, so yeah, it could have been. Yeah. yeah, it's a goofy, it's a goofy name, but yeah, I, I hardly even register it as a goofy name at this point. I just, you know. Well, hey, you know what? That it, it that it works for the song. Like, I, I don't even Catchy think of it as goofy. Yeah, I don't think of it as goofy anymore either. It just kind of becomes the song. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also uh, way easier to type in, or, or well, you know, I mean, how how many songs are named that? <laughs> Good point. It, it passes the Google test. Yeah, yeah that's, for sure. That's um, yeah, we've always talked about that. Um, you want uh, like all of your content to be easily searchable, right? So um, yeah, you just call your song like tonight, or uh, like I don't know, it's just something really generic. People will never be able to find it. Goodbye, love. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, that's part of, I mean, front side is still pretty well taken um, as far as Google is concerned, but we used to be FS back in mm -hmm. the day whenever we first released things. So um, that kind of, that did not pass the Google test. Like we had, that's tough. we had a, a New York dubstep artist come in before us. We had uh, like flight simulators pop up it was rough out there skaters yeah a lot of a lot of skateboarding stuff yeah it was it was rough it's still skaters. still yeah nothing changed <laughs> well our um our old band um alex and i we used to play in this band called gatling and there is about five other bands called that german grindcore bands just uh videos about the gun itself so that uh, it becomes tricky you know Oh yeah, yeah. We're currently battling with a, a Polish metal band. For oh, I think I right saw now, them so. when I was doing some research. Yeah. Shout <laughs> <laughs> out to Polish frontside. Did you guys? Did you ever think about just doing like a split EP or something with the other front side? Like, like, and then the question is, who gets like the back side of the EP? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that crossed my mind, but there should be a backside that we could sufficiently do that with or we could start a side project of some crazy shit and call it backside for the, <laughs> the, the yeah. album. 
You should just you should just make a project called Backside that's like the like all your songs in reverse and just release that. I don't know about all that. I mean, we could <laughs> you know, maybe just all the shit that we would never put out as Frontside can come out as Backside. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Because that's because that's our BS. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Uh, um yes okay i have a okay where am i i'm, I'm losing the thread oh yes okay um the video for almost there that video is criminally underrated um just can you tell us about how that video came together so well so well the label was <laughs> triumphant wanted us to make a music video <laughs> yeah and and, and, it, and we did too oh, yeah yeah uh, so so almost there is like it's hard it's hardly even i've kind of said it before i mean my the lyrics are you know sometimes there's more specific stuff in there and sometimes it's just imagery and things that fit the tone of the song it's lightly a political song and it just kind of touches on how silly it is to to um that we all you know place so much importance in the presidency or at least we I don't know. It's just, just saying that's kind of something. So that's why it's a clown in the video. I mean, that that clown oh. is is kind of symbolizing that you know so, somebody somebody going and and you know just causing a lot of ruckus in the city and like being mean to people, slamming ice creams on the ground and stuff. I mean, we were just I, this this was me brainstorming what we could what we could do in the video um and yeah so at, that's why at the end you know it's kind of i don't know everybody comes together and and tackles him yeah. does a little bit more than tackle him but yeah we we worked with bradley adam who is a incredibly talented uh director um the, the guy from our old label linked us up with him but yeah he came down uh he like drove all the way from Cleveland, Ohio, oh, wow. um, to help us out with it. Yeah, so it was cool. Uh, we just went around Raleigh one day, filming everything. It was it was a whole lot of fun. Nice, 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 nice. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that actually, your point about the lyrics actually ties in here to this next question I have. Um, there's a line in the song Lifesaver uh, where you say uh, you use uh, uh, ipso facto. Um, I'm not actually smart. Just smart. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, I mean, can you explain that line kind of in the grander context of the song? It, 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 like, and I guess that gets at a, a broader question here of when you're writing the lyrics, I mean, is it primarily the sound of the words you're going for? Or, Absolutely. Or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, that's, that's what I struggle with all the time. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I know what vocal sound I want to do, or I know roughly what, what sound I want to make with my mouth and it's turning in, turning it into lyrics that actually make sense and you can actually read them and it's saying something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that one, that one fit really well. And I was able to fit it into the message roughly. So, yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't like study Latin or anything. I don't. Know much about <laughs> it, but <laughs> it's catchy though. It's like you know, it, it's kind of an unexpected touch, and yeah, yeah, I like it. Well, um, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> One more question about lyrics, and I'll ask a question about the uh, instrumentals. Um, I was curious about the role that religion is playing on. On essentially, eventually, uh, you mentioned it in the in the song "Light and Busy." Uh, of course, there's the whole song title communion is a waste of wine um is that kind of a theme that's running through uh, on some level throughout i know it's not a concept record or is is that just uh does it kind of play a role in your life in any way i mean what what kind of role is that playing across the record yeah i mean well so i mean listen jolly will sit here and he'll 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 tell you he'll tell you god is good all right god is good. <laughs> <laughs> so and and you know yeah i mean there's there's been yeah i mean all all the lyrics are have to be a reflection of you know i mean they're a reflection of of what things i've thought and how i've felt about all the topics that it, that they cover um 
religion is definitely something that I've thought about and hypocrisy that exists within it. And it's just kind of a, it's just kind of my way of poking fun at it in some ways and being a little bit, being a little bit rude. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just something that I've, that I, that I think about. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. I'm, I'm um, not sure if I answered that question completely. No, no, no. That's that's totally great. Um, and I'm not going to uh, press you or anything like that. I mean, I I uh, I, I do want to ask the the uh, instrumentalist. So I guess I really all three of you about one specific riff in one of your songs, um, and that song is needed to do today. And there is a riff that uh, begins your song that, that song like that song, yeah, which is which is a crazy riff. I mean, I just want to ask really for all three of you or 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 whoever wants to answer this. I mean, how did you write that riff? Is that, is that, was there any inspiration going into that? It strikes me like really hard just st- starting the song off with that tap part, right? I'm honestly, well, so yeah, I remember, I remember coming up with that. I mean, it's, it's honestly a really simple pattern. It's just kind of, you know, it just sinks in really well with the drums. But yeah, I'm just really, I, I'm honestly really bad at tapping. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, doesn't sound like it yeah i mean I, I i actually don't know how to describe how we did that but yeah i i just i just started doing that same thing over and over and we eventually just fit like you know those triplet things all together and and form mm-hmm. something learn when to stop and start and yeah that's pretty that's pretty much it hmm Interesting, interesting. What what bands inspire you guys? I mean, I know that's kind of a generic question, but this seems like a good point to ask it. I mean, is there a wide range of influences across the three of you guys? You are, you have wildly different tastes. Are there any bands that are kind of mainstays that you point to when you're you're writing songs? Yeah, some, somebody else talk. <laughs> um, say. Uh, big influences on the on the band especially when a lot of the stuff that's getting released now is being written um let's say uh well y'all might know about some monine oh, ah yeah. yes yeah monine, i mean are we really happy with who we are right now the album uh, name a bad spot i'll i'll wait you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> Monine, The Fall of Troy, totally, especially on some of the harder lines we draw and that kind of, uh, that, the kind of riffage. Mm-hmm. Um, Boys Night Out, especially in some earlier stuff, whenever we were incorporating a lot. Uh, I don't even know. I mean, it was just early influences on the band. Yeah. A lot of Canadian and obvious, music. Cody and Cambria. Hmm. Crosty will like to hear that. Oh, He's uh... yeah. uh, Cohe's one of my favorite bands. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 huge for us as well. And yeah, Demira, Demira was a big one. And yeah, I mean there there are a ton of other little ones that that we could name, but that's that's pretty good. Yeah, fair enough. Cool, fair cool. Enough. The one like comment I've seen on a lot of your guys's like YouTube songs, music videos, all of that is um fallout boy meets fall of troy have you guys just heard that one in person a lot or like have you gotten that comparison a lot well so you know how we've been playing these songs for 10 years yeah <laughs> so we've heard that for probably even longer somehow <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it feels like longer than 10 years we've been hearing that so yeah i feel like you guys pretty... might be a little sick of that but <laughs> It's, all out Troy. It's a little, it's a little played. I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's what, it's whatever people want to relate it to. But you know, okay. Can I can I say something here? I you sound better than Patrick Stump. Like I like I, I, I yeah. Like I don't want to go listen to Follow Boy. Like, like ugh. <laughs> I mean, I think there's just a like, yeah. I mean, people. I, I don't know if people are trying to be complimentary or, or what exactly but yeah i mean i think there's a a fair amount of differences between us and fallout boy and similarly the fall of troy i mean yeah. i i get the comparison but yeah i mean it's it is a it is a different thing and it's a, and and that can be okay uh yeah 
<laughs> I understand the comparison. I, I, I don't think that, yeah. we sound like Fallout Boy. No, I I would agree. You do not sound like Fallout Boy. And 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 uh, in, in fact, there's something else that 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 bugged me that I saw recently. You guys posted this. It was an article from The Noise. Um, and the title was Front Sides Throwback Sounding EP, and we will I'm get to this bugs you guys too. Yeah, okay. I was I was I was pissed off on your guys' behalf. I was like, what is the so okay, by the way, I should put a plug. We are here on the Happy Fun Music Time podcast but with interviewing Frontside, new EP Closer to Closure is uh, recently released, and we are about to bash this website called The Noise for this <laughs> god awful article. Um, where they not only misspelled your guy's band name in the title. I don't know if you caught that. Oh, they, yeah, um, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was aghast. Wait, sorry, they also how did they spell it? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> they spelled it Franz Tide. Franz Tide. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sickest thing I've ever heard. Franz Tide. Franz Tide. That's. That's how that's how we pull one over on those Polish motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget backside. It's all about Franz Tide. Um, <laughs> um, so okay, so I that that was my question. Like, do you guys get annoyed because you guys do are not? A, that's such a disservice to you guys to say you're a throwback. I mean, come on, really? Well, I mean, uh, and I mean, so so the songs we just well, I mean, so this. I don't know if this goes against that or not, but those the songs that we just released are actually older than essentially eventually. Really? Oh, no way. But we re-recorded them. And I think it's and so yeah, I mean like I guess I, I, like but but we're, but that's also been it's also been said that we're re-recording these, so I don't know how much of it is them just thinking it's a throwback or like actually hearing it as a throwback or if they just Pretty are aware certain. of it. yeah they're like oh this is recorded so obviously it's got to be throwback and and realistically i just think there's plenty of other projects that put out very similar sounding stuff so i i mean i are you know it, it's in the same vein i mean mm. not like i mean i mean are we the are we the only band releasing music with distorted guitars and like loud singing and screaming i mean is is, is are we the only band with that no. now <laughs> I, I don't I, know I, I don't know you guys like you guys have some unique elements but like just in terms of like sort of pop punk with like mathy elements maybe post hardcore a bit i'd say like that's huge like there's a lot of bands doing adjacent stuff right now like i I wouldn't call it a throwback. So that's, so that's why all. I just don't get it. That's, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm just like, well, is this predetermined? I just, I don't know. I agree with that. But you know what? Yeah. If somebody wants to call it nostalgic and that's why they like it, go ahead. You know, if, if this if this reminds you of something from, you know, your 10 years back or whatever, and that's how you get into it, by all means. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. I, speaking on, um, cause I actually I didn't know the new EP um, was songs that you guys have been cooking for just as long. Um, what made you decide like to put the the songs on essentially eventually, and then the EP? Like, what made you hold them back? Well, we we've definitely the the ones from closer to closure have we've even recorded some of them two times but we were very young when we did it we didn't they are not online okay um and yeah i mean we we still we've still played them live and they still really hit uh i mean we have better gear now better knowledge of what we're doing and and how to play music and make a good live show happen so yeah i mean we still have fun playing them but we want to make it available for everybody else so yeah, we wanted to re-record that to serve that purpose. We want to, we we it was kind of it's it's honestly kind of a way of just buying a little bit of time because we're we are working on a lot of new material right now. Yeah, and we're kind of seeing what our options are. Like, are we going to do a whole full length next? Are we going to what what is our next release going to be? So it was kind of it honestly wasn't supposed to be release this way at all um but 
but we got a we got with a label they got involved and and honestly it's it's been for the best for yeah. sure but it wasn't supposed to be like this at all and uh yeah i mean we didn't we didn't hold out with the essentially songs we released them whenever we did and then and then we are triumphant was like hey let's let's re-release them and i'm gonna put them all on the same cd i was like all right so sure. yeah i mean there, there wasn't there wasn't necessarily only any holding back but it's yeah we we revisited some stuff to kind of you know kind of kind of help us uh Kind of like a stepping stone to the next LP. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. and I mean, they're they're fun songs. It was absolutely. It was, it was honestly a lot of fun getting to re-record it and reimagine these. They so. need they need the justice served, and I really think this EP is doing that for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it sounds like you guys got some new gear and you improved as musicians over the years. So this, uh, you were happy with this recording this time, like to put it out, and it sounds fucking great, like. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I'll I'll send you guys some of the some of the early recordings of these songs <laughs> on the yeah. low. Oh, please! Uh, and you you tell me which one's better. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll let I you agree. be the judge. Um, <laughs> you guys are gonna be like, I really like the original demos. They were way better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, when you guys uh, recorded the new EP, did you? you guys do anything differently from essentially just in the recording process or was it pretty similar well so for essentially we went with we we went with uh john harrell as our producer yeah. and he also mixed up the masters and everything um he but we went with a different studio this time black plate productions with john and garrett um i mean it's it's always a similar process with order of tracking and you know how all that goes um but it was a lot more fun uh i would say or i mean like you know just the the vibe was it's not like it was like just like a party the whole time but the it, there was a really good vibe and i mean i don't know we we, we use different amps and stuff we kind of just were able to use a different studio's approach different people's approaches to you know how we should tackle things, layer things, place things, all that type of stuff. Fair enough. Not not and not anything too wildly different though. Yeah. The bass was tracked live on closer closer closure. <laughs> Actually, that's big. Yeah. yeah. Rather than DI for essentially eventually. Huh. That was fun. I you know what I would say the bass sounds better on the new one. That um, it it has the bass sounds presence. incredible. Yeah. Best uh, bass tone mm -hmm. we've yeah. ever got for so, sure. Very stoked with how that turned out. Mm -hmm. no yeah no the, it, it sounds it sounds great like the new ep um uh and so so new new lp you're saying this is a stepping stone i mean have you already kind of started writing songs for that new LP, or like well, how's that going there yeah we have I mean, most of them probably. here here's the way i could put it if if sony got me on the horn <laughs> 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 and they were like walt you need to go in to to the biggest studio you can imagine and record all these songs we're going to pay for all of it but you have to leave tomorrow we could make <laughs> an album happen and it could probably be pretty good yeah. it was at that studio, i mean yeah. really i mean really i, Honestly, I, I mean yeah. we, could, we could make it happen we could hash it all out but yeah i mean the way i am uh yeah, it takes it takes me to feel really good about cementing something in, and we're still we're still working out plenty of that. But yeah, I mean it's it's the framework is there, and we're kind of getting all the details together mm. for it. So yeah, it, it was a it was yes it was a way of you know I mean buying time sounds cheap, but you know it was it was it was a fun thing to do, and it definitely took way more of our attention than I wanted to, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean we're we're still on we're still on course to release plenty of new material. Good, good, and and, and like, how did the label f like get in contact with you guys? Um, uh, did they find your demos or something? Did they find the uh, because uh, they put out essentially eventually, right? Am I right on that? Like, how did this relationship form? Which label. which one? Which so I, I'm not sure. Did you have, you have two different labels? We are okay. triumphant released essentially eventually, and then the new label that we're with revival recordings they're a north carolina based label and uh we were originally 
we were originally just going with we thought we were going to release on we are triumphant but then uh i don't know he just kind of he just kind of flaked out on doing that so we were like well we don't want it to fall completely flat so we hired a pr firm which i'm not even going to name because they really dropped the ball on almost everything mm. um uh, but yeah, I mean, the one thing that came good from that was putting it out there that we were releasing it, uh, um, you know, with not a, with no label or anything. And then Revival was Revival, I guess, saw that and they were like, "Hey, how about you release it with us? Go ahead and stop." We were already in the process of releasing this last year, and they were like, "Hey, don't do that and do it with us." So hmm. yeah, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> no, you answered it. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I would say, how did this relationship come about? And so, so this label, uh, Revival, they gave you some money. Is that how you did the guitar playthrough videos and and that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. There was, and, and I'm super grateful for that. There was a there was a budget for. I mean, they they there was a budget for a music video and yeah, other other things that uh, we were able to apply towards getting you know a guitar playthrough and some some decent promo pictures and you know all the the whole nine yards with marketing mm -hmm. they've helped us <laughs> get it together yeah for sure yeah um yeah good 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 and so are, are you planning to um like i guess you're going to plan to st stick around with them and put out your next material with them as well from the sounds of it as long yeah as long as they'll have us we're you know the goal here was to wait until it was, you know, hopefully having a, a COVID free world. Um, so we could be playing some shows and probably like setting up some tours right now. Um, and, and, you know, doing a good job of having, of releasing and all that, but, uh, we're still here. Um, mm -hmm. not exactly. Not exactly on course to have the most fantastic release and release tour and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, as long as long as they'll have us, we would we would love to stick with them. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, you're actually on the on the greatest podcast of all time, so this is a great release uh, tour for you. Uh, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Who needs a tour? Yeah, who needs a tour? You're gonna get like so many views on this. Um, okay, okay. Um, I want to just ask one one kind of uh, like final kind of maybe a weird question here um but does um does the band american football influence you guys at all for for me personally not at all i actually okay. have never listened to that whole album that everybody posts with the side of the yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I know i know that one riff <laughs> i know that just from the meme but yeah never, never really <laughs> Honestly, yeah, the whole thing I listened to it, it just didn't do much for me. I gotta be honest. Very interesting, and and, and is it the same for uh, for for you guys, Josh and, and Alex as well? You guys not not American football fans? No, I like American football, uh, but I wouldn't say I'm influenced by them whatsoever. Okay. I, okay. I personally cannot say that I have. I've heard of them for sure, no doubt, but I can't say that I've heard any of their music. Hmm. Okay, no, I was just curious because I do hear some similarities. Maybe it's in the vibe or something. I was just just crossed my mind earlier, and I wanted to ask. Um, but interesting stuff. Uh, just, just for reference, I've never heard Fallout Fall Boy either. So. <laughs> you're not you're not missing much. Um, <laughs> uh, Crossy, do you have any more questions on your end? Well, like we, we know, I know what the title of this episode is going to be. It's going to be "Front Side Hates American Football." Like that's yeah. going to be one of those clickbaity <laughs> titles. That's uh, where we're going with that. Let's go. Uh, oh, and you have to tag them in. Too. Yeah, where is tag. it? When are they going to talk about American football? <laughs> it's like right at the end. <laughs> yeah, the, the last five minutes of the episode. Yeah. Um, Any other bands we can bash to help you get a good title? Oh, uh, let me like, think. Okay. Um, can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> Why the hell not? It's a bashing. Pull up Spotify. <laughs> we do do a lot of bashing on this show. It it, it has a lot of real negative vibes to it. <laughs> the first episode was actually like our least favorite albums of all time, but it's like stuff like Corey Feldman and like just things that. 
people most people don't like but uh <laughs> yeah i don't know we have some fun what is cory feldman he was cory feldman before. when you when you were done the episode go <laughs> search cory feldman uh we wanted change and listen and yeah, tell me what you think of the song it's a great song <laughs> I'll check it out. He's, uh, he's the kid from the <laughs> we'll see what's up. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. A, <laughs> he's a former child actor who put out an album in 2016, I want to say, that is, uh, it, it's so bafflingly bad that it is almost amazing. It, it like transcends bad. Like it, it you know, yeah. And, and, and part of it is a Charlie's angels like concept album. And then he just abandons it partway through disc one. And then the rest of it just makes no sense. Yeah, so yeah. Discs. How many yeah. discs? Just double two. disc. Oh God. <laughs> double disc. Oh my God. No one needs that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So definitely check out We Wanted Change. That my, that gets my vote for the. Oh, oh, and Snoop Dogg is on one of the songs, too, of course. He has a feature on disc one. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Snoop. Yeah, that's hype. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, not I really a question. Dog, but, so, dog? I just I wanted know, to I say can't. that, like, you guys, I find your music, like, it, this might be really hyperbolic, but it has sort of like a, like a timeless quality to it. Like, I'll remember these songs all the time. They get stuck in your head, a lot of earworms. And, like, I can kind of, you can almost tell that you guys put a lot of work into this stuff. Because, um, like, yeah, you guys have been working on it for a super long time. But, uh, yeah, that's just like a little compliment tell. I wanted to give you guys at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, no. Totally agree with all that yeah um yeah no i get it it's timeless it it, it, it existed <laughs> throwback. It, it existed 10 years ago yeah throwback we know no it's that. timeless I, I, it's, no, I i appreciate that and that and yeah i mean i i like to think that but i'm 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 clearly biased you know so well, we are we are fans, and I will tell you, I am not typically a, a pop punk guy at all. But uh, your music, there's enough kind of kind of progressive elements in it, and enough uniqueness, and enough thought that's obviously gone into the songwriting and the lyrics, and how you structure your records and and so forth. That like you know, I get enjoyment out of it. That that isn't ironic, like with a lot of other pop punk and that the sort of genres, right? I mean, I legitimately think you guys are really good. So I hope that a few more people, at minimum, are uh, uh, check you guys out because of this. Do you want to plug anything before we go? Any uh, any aside from your EP, of course. Anything else coming up? I'd say that's pretty much it. We have very little on the horizon because we have no idea how um anything is gonna turn out so yeah definitely check out the ep um uh, i mean we have we have pre-order bundles you should be able to you know now they're just order bundles yeah now they're just order bundles right <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah they come with they can come with cd shirts uh sweatshirts it's a, it supports the band um helps us it helps the label uh keep us so oh perfect <laughs> toss me a link to that sweet, and I'll put sweet it in. lp <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so um so yeah no i mean well that's got it all right excellent. great all right well thank you so much for coming on the show um all right signing out here uh all listeners thank you for getting this far uh check out frontside on all their social medias you know where to find them i'll put a bunch of links in uh and check out happy fun music time check out all our stuff uh all right and take care Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, y'all.